We continue with our image fusion section, now moving on to Atlas VOIs with brain spatial normalization. What this means is that we want to use standardized VOIs. This is most common for the brain. And we'll need to match our individual image to a template so that those standardized VOIs can be applied. In PMOD, we provide several templates for the human brain and also for various animal species. These were mostly derived by users in the imaging community and then made available to us or to everybody via online resources. The atlases correspond to an underlying template. And in some cases, we have not only MR templates, but also various PET and SPEC templates available. It's important to think about the concept of the transformations that will be used. Our data sets rarely have the exact same geometry, and once we move to a template, then we will completely change the anatomy as well. In the case of individual data, we may have a PET and MR combination. So obviously the overall geometry of the subject's head is the same, but the image matrix may differ substantially simply by the resolution used. If the images were acquired on a hybrid scanner, they may have the same overall coordinate system, meaning that the only real processing needed is the re-slicing. But once we move to a template image, we'll have a completely different geometry, here shown with a simple rotation, but in reality we have a complete warping of the shape, since no two brains are the same shape, meaning that we need an elastic transformation. If we consider these three parts of a transformation, then in fact we have a transformation here labelled A between our PET and MR data, and then another transformation labelled B from the MR data to the MR template. And if we were to mathematically combine these transformations so that we could go directly from the PET to the template, then we would have a direct transformation C that performs that for us. We won't look at it in this exercise, but for work in our neuro tool, another important concept is the inverse transformation, where we have the inverse of those transformation matrices, allowing us to go back between any components of our image to transform the atlas to our original pet data, for example. In the exercise we're going to, shoot, going to use now, we will directly match a pet image to a pet template rather than an MR template so that we can quickly ap apply some of these atlas VOIs and calculate statistics. The exercise will take place in the Fusit tool again. Now we can change the default matching mode from either hybrid or rigid to deformable matching. So again, this is from the Fusit configuration that we've seen in the previous exercises. And then we can go to the DB load tab, where in our demo database for subject PFUSE1, we have an FDG PET available. We will select only the FDG PET, so when Fusit opens this single image, it will always place it as the input image, allowing us to choose what we do as a reference. Now in the lower right, we see the setup for our workflow. The species has been correctly detected as human, and we don't need any time frame averaging because we have a static PET. Or cropping since the image shows only the head, particularly focused on the brain in this case. So now we need to proceed to select our reference image. So we proceed using the matching method deform workflow and this will take us to the next, next page in the series, the reference and matching page. Now on the right hand side we see the opportunity to load our reference data. And for template matching we have a shortcut available. We don't need to load from database or any other method. We can use the blue labeled icon to the right of the reference loading area, which shows us the list of available templates for the species that we're working with. In this case, we have an FTG pet data, so we can select the standard pet template from the top of the list. That loads the template and now we can use our fusion controls as before 
to examine the template image and our individual. We can see not only is the shape different, but we have quite a translation difference between the two. Again, it's not always necessary if you want to perform batch processing or just move through the workflow quickly, but we can very easily see these translation mismatches. So from the right hand side, we can select the input reslicing tools, and then we can easily use those controls to improve the initial alignment, making it easier for the algorithm to find the first affine transformation before doing any elastic matching. We can then start the normalization process using the match current workflow button in the lower right. For a simple case like this, it should proceed rather quickly, but the exact amount of time this takes will depend on the resolution of your template image, how similar the two data sets are, and the power of your computer. So on the matching result page, the result can be easily assessed by displaying contours for the template and using the fusion controls as before. From the lower part of the fusion controls, we can turn on contouring, which initially shows contours for both A and B, so for the input and the reference. If we select only B, then we see only a contour for our template. If we use the fusion slider, we can see how that contour corresponds to the template, and if we need to adjust it, we can select the reference image controls and the contouring tab where we can change the threshold. For now, I'm happy with the threshold, so I can actually move the fusion slider all the way to the input image, and then I can triangulate different locations, all the time looking at the correspondence between that red contour and the outline of my individual brain that has been transformed to match the template. Assuming that I'm happy with the transformation, I can save it to the database in case we need to do the calculations for this data set again. So I can use the Save Transformation icon on the right hand side, where I can save this transformation, for example, as FDG Pet to Template. So that I can access it easily later on. Now we can carry on and do some volume of interest analysis. So we can proceed with the workflow button in the lower right, VOIs. And here, now that we are working in this template space, we don't need to draw our own VOIs anymore. We can use the predefined atlases. And these are accessible from the template tab at the bottom of the VOI list, where we see a number of subtabs, the first of which is the Atlas subtab. Here we have a drop down list, again showing available, template, uh, available atlases in this particular template space. And for this example, we can select the AAL merged regions. A list appears in the template voice panel further up. This is actually in a tree structure. With the blue icon at the bottom of the list, we can expand or compress that tree structure. And I can actually select the regions that I want, for example, only left frontal lobe, to be transferred to the data in a moment. For this example, I will select everything. And then to use the VOIs for analysis, I should outline them, the button below the atlas selection, so that they're actually converted from this pre-definition, actually saved as maps in our resources, into VOIs based on contours that we can use. Again, depending on the speed of your computer, this will take some seconds to a couple of minutes. And once it's complete, again, we can navigate within the image to inspect the overlap of those VOIs with our data. On the right hand side in the fusion controls I can turn off the red contour for the template 
and then I can explore the image to see how those VOIs correspond to the tracer uptake. It's important to note that these Atlas VOIs are generalized, but with these methods they can be applied reproducibly. You can also modify the atlases within PMOD and you can introduce your own atlases if you're not completely satisfied with those available in the standard distribution. Now that we have 67 VOIs applied to our PET data, we can calculate the selected statistics. In this case, saving time by only calculating the average and standard deviation. So that we rapidly have statistics for the full brain based on these Atlas VOIs. And again, where the SUV information is available, we can directly switch to SUV in the top left of the statistics dialog. If we're interested in something like SUVR, we can also make everything relative to a given reference region. In this case, scrolling through the list of VOIs, we could select at the moment one part of the cerebellum and we already have an SUVR range in the statistics which again can be saved or could be copied to clipboard for transfer into something like Microsoft Excel.